The purpose of this video is to show you an actual patient visit and it went pretty well. When she first came to see me five months ago, she had difficulty swallowing and you'll see in this uh, visit that she actually still has that. But lots of GERD, lots of postnasal drift, severe congestion, her oxygen drops uh, very low and chronic constipation, debilitating anxiety, f severe fatigue, at a, 8 out of 10, daily headaches, and a variety of Lyme organisms have been diagnosed with her. She was living in black mold for a long time, and she's got all the basic uh, standard chronic illness causes. Parasites, mold, Lyme, toxins, and we're pulling that stuff out of her. So you'll see through the visit the progress that she's been making, and at the end, I'll wrap up the video. My plan is to do a lot of these types of videos. And of course, with 100% full um, cooperation and willingness with the patient. And I'm not doing anything special with these particular visits. I'm not giving discounts. I'm not giving gifts. I'm not doing anything special. This is just regular standard uh, patient care. I'm not making any money off of these visits from YouTube. As a matter of fact, I demonetized my YouTube channel about six or seven months ago and then youtube demonetized my channel about three months ago so i don't like youtube they don't like me i don't want their money they don't want to give me money so um, that financial relationship i have with youtube is has been severed first by me second by them so don't claim that i'm just doing this to make money off of my patient visits on youtube this is for education now as you learn these things that um, i tell my patient it doesn't mean that it works for you if you need direct care, you can become a patient of mine. But when I give advice to my patient, that is, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to my patient and I'm talking through the camera and you're like a fly on the wall. You're listening over my shoulder and you can see what's going on and, and you know, you'll learn some great stuff. You will see the superiority of diet and supplements over medications in the world of chronic disease healthcare. That's the purpose. And the other thing is that it takes a while for people to get better. Right? For some people, it could be two years. It could be five years. Um, for some people, it's six months. But this is not acute care. So you break a bone, six weeks later, it's healed because you went to the ER, they put you in a cast. That's acute care. Medicine is great for that. But if you have a variety of symptoms that have been hanging around for a long time, uh, conventional medical care it does not very, do a very good job with that because it's drug-based. And drugs always cause side effects. They don't get to the cause. But with uh, diet supplements, we have um, great success because we get to the cause. Hello. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks for doing this. Of course. So, all right. So, we're going to, re I'm recording this. Mm -hmm. And the purpose is to put this on YouTube and thousands of people will see it. And you're cool with that? <laughs> no pressure or anything. <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah, I'm cool with that. <clears throat> all right. If at any point, though, like if you don't want this on YouTube, I don't have to put it up or, you know, even like a year from now, if you want to take it down, I'll just take it down. You know, not a big deal. YouTube censors me anyway. So <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it's my honor to be able to help in any way, help the uh, the movement. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So. So this is a legitimate patient visit and um, obviously HIPAA compliant because you're willing to do this. And so, all right, so I got your message. Let me go to that. Let me go to my file here online here. Or my, let me read off that message. Okay, so last time we talked it was March 21st. And okay, so you said, despite some setbacks this past week, I'm feeling I'm continuing to make a lot of positive progress and feel like I'm overall more resilient when it comes to triggers exposures and setbacks, it, see, it also seems that I'm slightly less chemically sensitive and, and have less vertigo and dizziness. I also am finding I have more stamina. My personality and creativity have been coming back. Okay, that's good. Um, but you haven't started Para 3 because you're still passing parasites with Para 2, and you passed a very large one on Easter, and then you notice a huge difference in how you felt better. Um, you still see worms here and there, but overall it's less. <clears throat> Today you saw possibly eggs and flukes. You've gained 21 pounds back in the past couple of months. So what was your lowest weight? So I initially, um, from 2021 till 
very recently, I um, lost 60 pounds. I went from 160 to 100 pounds at my lowest weight. And now I'm up to 121 again. And that's only since I've seen you really. And since passing parasites, I, I notice a correlation with my weight gain. Um, yeah. You look it's almost so like when I eat, I actually am being nourished now versus not. Yeah. You look so much better. Yeah. Everyone that sees me says that like people that haven't yeah. seen me in months or whatever, it's like, wow, you look so good. I mean, I wish I could say I feel amazing, but just hearing that from people just, I mean, I have more color in my face. My skin yeah. used to be gray and yeah. white. And now like I have some color and it's, it's just look more, it, I feel like myself more. Am I delusional when I say that you came to my office once? Oh, you, I did. And so the first time I saw you, it was in December right. and I was a mess. You looked so much older. It was hard. It's hard, on my, it's hard on the mind to see like what you look like versus your, your age, you know, but now you look so much better. So that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Okay. So you're increasing ice bath a little bit for the Lyme. I still, and, and instantly you started having electrical like sensations in the heart, help her, heart palpitations, dizziness, extreme anxiety. Then you yeah. accidentally took two droppers of it instead of five drops. Pulse. Yeah. That was a rough night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking it was the IS Bart because I'm, you know, I'm taking two full droppers of the IS Bart and I thought the Babesia one and this one I just took it and I was like, whoa, <laughs> it was yeah. pretty scary, but it just, it just, I mean, I, I am testing positive still for Babesia. So I know I have, it. it's not even a question, but it just confirmed even more that this is an active effect infection that I need to be dealing with. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so the next paragraph you said it was about your swallowing difficulty and I, I got a story. So I got a patient. He's actually, he lives in Michigan. He's like three hours away or, or two and a half hours away. <clears throat> and, um, when he first came to see me two months, three months ago, he, I walked in the room and he smelled like yeast. The whole room stunk like yeast. It was pretty wild, hmm. but he had this infection on his shin about this big. And he had difficulty swallowing. Okay. So he wants that, you know, the infection on his, on his leg going to go away. And I just want all the yeast to go away. Cause it just was really bad. Just standing next to him. It was hard to be next to him. So I put him on period two. I think it was like high, high dose, like 16 pills a day for a month. And he came back and I walked in the room and all that smell was gone. And then, the and then the next month, so two months of, later, in total, that skin rash was better by 40%. And his swallowing is better. That's one of his main complaints, though, was difficulty swallowing. So now in my, I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, difficulty swallowing, I'm thinking yeast candida. And I have one other patient with the same thing getting better because we're killing off candida. So that, that's your difficulty swallowing, in my estimation. I feel like it's been a major factor for me. And every doctor I've told this about, they're like, no, 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 that can't be a factor. It's all, it's all neurological because I have had a manometry study done that shows 70% paralysis in my, in my esophagus, but learning so much from you, I just intuitively know it's infectious, whether it's Bartonella, Babesia, Candida, but I have noticed when my Candida is really bad, it, my swelling is worse. And there's definitely a correlation with that. Yeah. And right now I have pretty bad thrush, and, but that's been since was on antibiotics on and off for a year straight for Lyme disease. And that's what really killed me. And I've had thrush and candida ever since then. Yeah. And I just can't, I can't kick it no matter what I try. And so you have a white coating on your tongue. I do. Uh, I can see it. Yeah. yeah. I uh, see it. So we want that to go away hundred percent and just, of course, just scraping, it's not enough, but it would help to, mm -hmm. to scrape, but then, okay. So I'm going to recommend some supplements to go after that, um, to help your body get rid of that. Okay. So let me go back to that file. Okay, you quite, you had a question on uh, low dose naltrexone. Um, that's been um, a holistic medical doctor's dream for 20 years or more. I mean, in my whole career, I've heard about LDN for so long, but it blocks opioid receptors from physiologically. It makes people feel better because it, blo it blocks opioid receptors or something. I forgot what it is. And yeah. that's all I know about endorphins, it. With endorphins, yeah, and to make you feel better. The immune system and the nervous system. So, so being a chiropractor, I can't say much about drugs, but I've not right. seen anybody get cured of their chronic condition with LDN. But maybe they'll feel better. So it's between you and your medical doctor. 
about LDN. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. I respect your opinion, so I had to at least ask. Okay. And then you started physical therapy for mito slash neural issues, meaning like mitochondrial issues. Is that what they're saying, mito? Yeah. So I have all sorts of genetic disorders and mutations. And um, since my mold exposure and Lyme, I think as well, um, I've had, you know, all sorts of symptoms of mitochondrial dysfunction. And they think my oxygen, like I'm always checking my oxygen, is more mitochondrial than infectious. But maybe it's all one and the same. It's the same. But um, yeah, I'm just so weak. I mean, my oxygen's still dropping to the 80s if I try to walk too much. So this physical therapist is trying to, you know, help me get my stamina back. And also, you know, I have confirmed damage to my central nervous system. And you know, I, my vertigo and dizziness is lessened, but it still affects my daily life. So he's trying to work on both of those things with different exercises. Yeah. But so, I also, they also found I have issues with my C1 and, you know, it might be something's going on with my neck that are contributing to my swallowing and my weakness. Okay. So you've had all, a lot of symptoms get better. But it seems like the one symptom that hasn't really gotten better would be candida, right? So I yeah. think that, <clears throat> I think when your body is cleared of candida and your lungs are cleared and your cells and mitochondria are cleared, all that stuff will go away. And, you know, having done this personally, right? I had the mold and I don't care if you say mold, candida, yeast, fungus, it's all the same family. So I had trouble breathing. I never measured my oxygen, but... Chances are it was low. For me, it's not in my lungs at all. They, my lungs look totally fine, totally normal. I've had, you know, pulmonary function test shows like some weakness in my diaphragm, but my lungs are fine. That's why they're all the doctors are mystified. I mean, I also have autonomic dysfunction. So my immunologist thinks it's a combination of potentially Babesia, autonomic dysfunction, and mitochondrial, like all kind of coming together. Because when I walk, my oxygen will drop and then when I sit and the oxygen goes back up. So it's definitely partially exertion, but it's always worse when I'm stressed. So I think it's like vasoconstriction because I also have Raynaud's. Um, so like, I think it's a combination of exertion and stress because when I'm really panicked or stressed, that's when the oxygen goes down. Um, and it happens, always happens in stores more than anything. I don't know if it's like the lack of oxygen in the, in the room. I've seen you like talk about it in videos, like with the autonomic, something with the kidneys and autonomic dysfunction and oxygen drops. Yeah. I, I re can't recall which video you talked about it in, but I'm still trying to figure out what, what's really causing it. So the stress part is legit. And there was a study done in the forties, another one done in the early sixties, where they confirmed that when you have poor health and you have, let's just say the mitochondrial dysfunction caused by something, right? Whether it's Lyme or yeast or parasites or metals, then you get stress your cortisol goes up and just everything gets worse. And at the time they're talking, they're like measuring, you know, lactic acidosis as they defined it back then. But so when I had mold and I was flying to Utah once for a seminar, I felt so bad. I couldn't like watch a movie that was dramatic or, you know, action or whatever. I had to watch something that was like calming because I couldn't, you know, I couldn't handle it. Right. It's too much stress. That's to how I am. Yeah. So we just have to clean your body out more. And then it should get better. Okay. okay. And it has gotten better. And, you know, with my PT, they want me walking 10 minutes a day. And like the first few times I did a 10 minute walk after being bedridden for a year, like, oh, wow, I'm doing really good. Then this past week, it's like, I don't know if I'm pushing myself too much, but now my oxygen's dropping to 85, 89. So I don't know. I'm just riding the wave and just, you know, doing my part and getting better and just beginning stronger. Hoping all okay. those things will eventually get better. But the swallowing and the oxygen are probably my two most concerning things. Okay. Symptoms. Yeah. That are remaining. I mean, you got more, but so in my previous notes, I was going through earlier. It <clears throat> so so three months ago, your oxygen dropped to 81%, walking around the botanical gardens. Um, so have you had that drop that much in the last yeah. I mean, maybe. since the last time I talked to you, it's gotten better and I haven't had such dramatic drops until probably in this past week. And I've had some drops as low as 85. I think 85 is my lowest. So is it because it has been raining more there? It has been. Yeah. And I've had some exposures that I've been kind of concerned about and kind of panicked about. And um, 
um, I went to a doctor's office and walked in the one day and I knew there was black mold right away because my head started swelling, my legs started tingling. I, they were asking me if I was okay, but I couldn't even think straight. Like they were trying to have me fill out paperwork and I couldn't even think. And I knew, and I looked at the ceiling and there's clear water damage everywhere. And my body's just like, get out, get out. And I just ran out of there. <clears throat> that was one of a couple different exposures recently. Um, like in one exposure, my throat actually closed up. Um, that's a long story too, but it's been, I've had a couple exposures recently that I was really worried about setting, setting me further back. But I think, you know, just even the rain, like it's been cold, it's been rainy. I've been feeling crappy. My joint pain is back. I feel more fatigued. Um, yeah. Those are the organisms. Rain fog feels like it's coming back a little bit. Yeah. Those are the, the mold or whatever the organisms having a party because of the condition. That's how I feel. Yeah. Okay. Because I always feel good. Like we had a couple of really nice sunny 80 degree days and it was like, I felt like a whole new person. Yeah. It makes such a difference. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. I'm looking at your current supplements. So you got pair two and pair three. Um, and then when's the last time you had a parasite come out? Um, just a couple of days ago, I had a couple little ones and like, uh, what I think are flukes. Okay. Potentially the eggs, but I can't, you know, be sure. Yeah. I do a lot of time, you know, a lot of, spend a lot of time like researching parasites obsessively nowadays. So, um, but yeah, I have had all sorts of stuff come out of me, but the, the last big one was on Easter. I was sitting with my family and got so sick. I started getting dizzy. I thought I was having a mast cell reaction or allergic reaction. I thought I was going to die. Then I ran to the bathroom and boom, just tapeworm, like no, no stool, just tapeworm. And it was incredible. That was definitely my rec my new record. That was the biggest one. Um, and since then, it's only been a few here and there, and like That's little good. ones here and there. But, but I'm not sure if I'm ready for pair three, or if I should just keep, you know, doing the pair two. We're That's about to do another it. full moon challenge. No, so, we, so on my list here, I have pair three ten drops twice a day. Is, is that what you're doing? I or? haven't started it. Yeah, I have not started it just because. You did tell me to wait like two weeks, not seeing any parasites with para two before I start para three. So I haven't started it. Let's do it. Let's start it. Okay. Okay. So the lower dose, right? 10 drops twice a day instead of 25 drops three times a day. So you can do the smaller dose. And then and then you need to cycle it three weeks on, one week off. I have that in the notes. So mm -hmm. add, just adding that is a big deal. Um okay. and but I but I want to tackle the the candida. Also, now the you're on the fungi DX at five drops twice a day, and then topically, like around the left ear and stuff, right? Yeah, I focus it mostly on my left side because that's just like yeah. where a lot of my issues are in my ear. And um, okay, and you're and I'll you're, do a little bit. okay, and you're taking it orally too, right? Though, mm -hmm. okay, yep. Um, let me see, let me see about this. Do you, here's a question Do you think that fungi DX is helping you? No, probably not. Um, I think I need to go a little bit further with that. Now with the para two, you're taking two pills twice a day. Yep. And then on the full moon, I do I do triple it. The full moons. Okay, good. Well, I, not triple it. I'll do three or sometimes four. Okay. Twice a day. All right. So look, the Fung DX, <clears throat> it's um it also comes as a capsule. So you can do the X, the liquid topically, and then we're going to try the um, Fungi DX capsule. Um, and I can open that capsule. Yeah. Because I can't swallow any capsules, or I'm still like every all the capsules I do have, I crush or open. Okay. Or, then... or do liquid. That's why I love the liquid tinctures. I just love them. It's so much easier. Yeah, the IS Bev, IS Bart. Yeah, and even the Fungi DX is easy. Like, I don't mind. I'm getting so used to it. But yeah, I have to chug that pair of two every day, the bottle mover. <laughs> like, I stir it all up into a sludge and I, I drink it, which it's not the end of the world, but I do like liquid when I have that option. Okay. Have you ever taken um, reg liquid oregano before? I've had it, I think, in like other like tinctures, but not straight up. Okay. And I've considered it because I know it can help with yeast. Yeah. Okay. So let, I'll, let me go back to this liquid fungi DX then. So we're going to increase the dose instead of five drops twice a day. 
um, let's make it what I don't know. I'm going to say um, 20 drops three times a day. What do you think about that? That's fine. If, if you think that's the best thing to combat candida, because I'm, you know, I'm drinking cow dark OT, but I don't think that's enough. Like, I feel like I need something pretty strong. Yeah. The, yeah, I just keep thinking, I just keep thinking like liquid versus capsule and, and all the things that I have that are liquid for fungus, Funch DX, Bactrex, Oxy DHQ. Um, you've done a lot of silver? I've never done silver because I've always been a little afraid of it, to be honest. Okay. But I'm open, but I'm open to it. I mean, I just think it, part of it is just the dosage, you know, like if you get the right dosage, you know, that's what it would take to tackle it. Now, okay, but I, I do want to recommend, and I don't carry a liquid um, oregano, but I've had a lot of patients, you know, acquire it at a health food store or online or whatever. And you said you've considered it in the past. So I'd recommend that you you get some, and whether you take it or not initially, just buy it, just have it there. And then at some point you may be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to try this when you're confident enough to, you know, and then you can let it sit right here on the tongue and the mouth swallow it down you know so, so is there a specific like recommended dose or just kind of feel it out and see well it depends it on the product that you get so just re read the label on that okay. yeah yeah that makes sense okay, okay. Just i have straight oil of oregano or, yeah or just straight yeah. oregano yeah i mean i have or oregano caps uh, tablets and capsules and stuff but you need the liquid i've taken citra drops which i know is a little different but it's essentially like one of those companies who makes all these products for mold, like EC3, I don't know, one of those companies. Okay. But that, I was taking that for a while, and I really felt like that helped. It's just called Citra Drops, and it's a concentrated orange seed, lemon seed extract. Yeah, we carry a I great- I might revisit that. Yeah, we carry a grapefruit seed extract liquid. It's pretty powerful. So do you, this one that you're talking about, do you have it at home? Oh, I ran out of it a while ago, and I've considered re-upping with it but it's just i've been on so many other supplements that that kind of went to the back burner and i never tried it again okay <clears throat> okay so there's just a lot of options um i want to put in i'm going to put grapefruit seed extract in your list not that i don't just to, just so we can at least talk to talk about it next time okay okay um so i'm going to put don't buy but it'll remind us. Okay. Um, now the carboxy. So how's it going with that? Great. I really feel like it's made such a difference for me with like wool detox and just it's, I love it. I really, really feel like it's helped me. I mean, when I was living in mold, I mean, I still think I'm living in mold, but at least now I'm thriving more and I just thinking clearer and I'm less reactive. I still have reactions to certain buildings and things, but I'm overall, like I can actually be in a car. I can, I just feel like I'm getting my life back. You're saying the parasites but... have been amazing, but okay. what's that? So carboxy has been a great help for you with all those things. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, the question, the question is how, obviously one of my big issues. Yeah. How much can you take per day? So I have you at one scoop. Oh. Yeah. I have, I'm at one scoop right now and I've just stayed at that because I don't, I don't know. I'm okay. I'm down to go up though. The more the better, as long as your body can handle okay. it. Yeah. Now the record okay. is a woman. She was taking four to fourteen scoops a day for a month, and over the course four of the year, fourteen, four to fourteen, you're just randomly pushing yourself with the higher dose. Over the course of a year and a half, she averaged four scoops per day, and she went through eight or nine wow. bottles in like a year and a half, and it fixed her body up ninety percent. You know, then she gave a patient of mine to tweak some of the other things, but so it's just a matter of like experimentation and, you know, take, do two scoops a day and then three scoops and just see how your body can. And the more that you okay. take it, the better off you'll be. And it'll help tremendously with the candida. It's, okay. it's going to be more important to do that with the carboxy than it is to take a candida supplement. Although so we're carboxy obviously together. Candida. Bigger. Huh? That makes sense. Carboxy can help candida because it's candida is essentially a fungus. Yeah. And you're getting the mycotoxins out, which kills the tissue 
and then the fungus goes on that dead tissue. Yeah, I definitely feel a difference with the carboxy. I think I'll never be without it. Yeah. And, uh, okay, so look. I mean, so did I tell you the two rules to follow when you're getting better? No. Okay, number one, don't change anything. And number two, if you change something, you just tweak it a little bit. So we're tweaking a little bit by increasing carboxy and increasing fung DX liquid. That's what that's all we're doing. Just okay. to keep, keep your health going up. Yeah. And adding in para three. And adding in the para three. Yeah. Yeah, because I definitely don't want to, you know, go backwards. I've come such a long way. I was just thinking how a year ago I was literally so sick. I was crawling on the floor to get to the the bathroom. Like I was so bedridden. I was literally crawling because of my oxygen and how dizzy I was and having derealization and like just thinking I was going to die. I was in the hospital for starvation. I mean, I was on my way out. Like I really was convinced of it. Yeah. So the fact that I'm even here, not only like, you know, not only am I alive, but I'm like on my way to thriving again. And it's really thanks to you. I get a little emotional about it, but I find that I have this new ho found hope that I didn't have even a year ago. So, oh, that's nice. You're welcome. Yeah, <laughs> pleasure. So, yeah. And so, one of your videos you posted recently about you know calling for people to come on your YouTube and said something about you know the system as a whole and just how broken it is the medical system. And my experience with Lyme disease has been like I could write a book about it, going through the medical system. But when you, what you said. I think in the end said one way to fight back is to get better and that just really resonated with me and I'm on such a mission to get better oh, and to be able nice. to help people other people yeah. in the future yeah that's cool so when we yeah. talk again let me get a date here um as I go through actually I'm already scheduled for June and I plan to come in person because oh, okay. it would be the six month it'll be the six month mark from where I when you I saw you last so I thought it'd be cool to come in person okay so how much better are you now compared to the first visit um on a scale of zero to 100 percent from the first oh, visit overall. yeah mm, i'd say 50 percent okay good 40 to 50 percent probably but yeah. from where i was a year ago probably like 60 70 percent but since i because i was already getting a little bit better i was detoxing a little bit before i saw you but i was still a mess when i first saw you yeah so i'd say around 50%. Okay, good. So the main metric, yeah. the two main metrics for you between now and uh, what, four, six weeks from now or whatever, is the white coating on the tongue decreasing and then the oxygen, as you measure it, doesn't go down as much, right? We want to keep it up higher. Yeah, like those are the two main metrics. So next time I see you, I'll ask you how that's how that's going. Cool? Okay, sounds good. Sounds All right, plan. Th thanks for doing this. I'm glad you're doing Thank better. You, awesome. Schmidt. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, see ya. Okay, bye-bye. Okay.